Hello, thank you for joining me for today's lesson. Today we will be looking at just a couple examples and how to work through the examples of calculating concentration firstly, concentration of gases in the atmosphere based on certain environmental conditions and then we would also look at calculating the settling velocities of particulates in the air because you know when we talk about air pollution these are some of the elements in the atmosphere that we are most interested in gases and particulate matter so the first example now what i have here is i just have uh, an insert of the original worked example provided on the worksheet on the e-classroom page but then I'm going to follow that up with uh, a simple example of working through the problem where we organize the information in a simpler way so the information provided on the worksheet for you um, looks like this the first calculation we will be doing we will be looking at calculating the concentration of gases in the atmosphere so this is the first step uh, where we determine the volume of the gas, um, the volume of two moles of gas occupied at temperature 25 degrees Celsius and at atmospheric pressure 280, 820, sorry, right? Um, now this is the equation that we will be using, okay? I will work through each of these parts um, individually for you and this is the um, from all the data provided this is the data substituted into the equation and when what you are doing is you're solving for V2 so V2 is actually what is going to give you um, the volume of gas right see so you use this equation to calculate the liters per mole at that temperature and pressure that was given above then there will be a second step right the second step this is where we will now convert parts per million into mass per volume right and we use the previous result we plug it into this equation in order to do that but it's important for you to note here that is they said a sample of air analyzed at zero degrees and at atmospheric pressure so this is standard at atmospheric pressure um, this is reported to contain nine parts per million of carbon monoxide so we're going to use the information from ab um, above here what normally you would all right but what they're telling us is that we are actually going to be calculating it for zero degrees at this atmospheric pressure so this makes a difference because if you look down here it said at zero degrees celsius at that at one ap atmospheric pressure the volume of gas is actually 22.4 right if you recall the previous equation we were actually using not zero degrees but 25 degrees celsius and this would be the atmos this this would be the um pressure atmospheric pressure that temperature okay so to continue our calculation this is the calculation the equation we will be using okay um so our volume of gas if we follow this our volume of gas is our denominator remember it, we're at zero degrees celsius and one atmospheric pressure um ppm was given that's nine the mole of gas what we in the the um what we insert here actually would be our relative molecular mass and 
a periodic table is provided for you so for each of these calculations you will be able to determine that so the 28 grams is what we insert here and then we multiply by 10 to the power 3 so what we have now derived at the end of this calculation is the this is our mass per volume this is at micrograms um, per meter volume right micrograms and here it is converted to milligrams all right but what I want to do next is I want to show you how to properly organize your data so that it will help you help you to understand a little better what is happening so from that same information that we had we are now going to organize this is the same equation for step one that was provided we will organize our information according to state one and state two so we look at the left side of the equation we consider that state one the right side state two now from the information provided we know that v1 was two mole of gas and that would have been for one mole remember at um, zero degrees celsius if you recall at zero degrees i beg your pardon at zero degrees celsius we were told that this is what it was right so for two mole of gas v1 that's two by 22.4 right so remember this is a constant here t1 this is our um, kelvin constant p1 this is our atmosphere at one this is our atmospheric pressure here right so state two on this side state two is what we are sol we're solving for the volume which is v2 remember we don't know the volume t2 is the temperature 25 degrees celsius so we need to convert that to kelvin so now we have 298 so that's the, the kelvin the constant plus 25 gives us 298 and then our p2 our p2 if you recall from the information provided um, where is it right our p2 would be this pressure here all right so we have all our information available and organized there for us so that means we can begin um, firstly we reorganize our equation in order to solve for v2 so we want to make sure v2 is on this side and our this our equation facilitates that then we just plug in all the information at this point so v1 we know this is v1 so that's 2 by 22.4 multiplied by p1 760 multiplied by t2 this is our t2 here 298 then we divide by t1 273 just follow with my uh, cursor here and multiply that by p2 so that's 820 okay and you just um you just continue your calculation and your final answer for v2 should be 45.32 liters all right so remember that's our volume but if you recall this is just step one we go to step two now remember for step two we are required to convert from parts per million to mass per volume right conversion from parts per million to mass per volume so we were told that our ppm is 9 so that was given and remember we are calculating our relative molecular mass for carbon monoxide so carbon from the periodic table that's 12 plus oxygen 16 giving us a total of 28 grams okay uh, rem if you recall there was a constant so we multiply by 10 to the power 3 all right so the rest of the data um, 
we use the the volume for carbon dioxide at 22.4 all right remember this is what according to the data given to us this is what the value is at zero degrees all right so this this remains a constant here and remember we were also told that um right so let's continue so now we have all the data that we can plug into the second part of the equation so we have our 9 ppm multiplied by our volume of carbon dioxide gas multiplied by 10 to the power 3 divided I beg your pardon my mistake the 9 ppm multiplied by the RMM by 10 to the power 3 divided by the volume of our gas at 0 degrees Celsius we complete our calculation we get 11,250 micrograms per volume and you convert that to milligrams you get 11.25 okay so I hope that helps you a bit so let us move to the second one in this calculation we are attempting to calculate the, the speed of settling settling velocities of the particles that are in the air this here is the calculation that is provided for us and the, the variables the, the components of the calculation is defined here for us so our v1 is what we are solving for all right g is our gravity gravitational constant that is provided um, yes that is provided um, pp refers to the density of the particle pa density of the air dp that's this here this is the diameter of the particle and U here represents viscosity of the air alright this is very important to note at the bottom here this little note for most applications the density of the air is negligible that's this component of the uh, equation it is negligible compared to the density of the particle right so that's this here so the density of the air compared to the density of the particle the difference between them is negligible and since they are so close essentially what we're saying is this can be omitted from the equation so you may observe that um, PP is often omitted from the equation alright let's continue so um, according to this right so there's further information we need some atmospheric and in info so you're asked to determine the rate of a fog cloud composed of one micrometer particles that's your diameter at this atmospheric temperature 27 degrees all right and this is the density of the particle all right so let's continue so what we have done now if you recall this is our this is the data that was given to us and we were told that the density of the air can be ignored that's this one here right so we've given three components already diameter right we have temperature information and we have density so we now plug that into the equation all right this they have done it here for you okay um, but let us continue let me give you a thoroughly worked example in an attempt to explain it in a little more detail so the answer we are looking to get is 2.95 by 10 to the minus 5 power right so that and that is meters per second all right remember we 
looking at determining settling rate or settling velocity. Right, so here are some things that you might want to note. For each question, the diameter of the particle and the density of the particle are the only variables. The only, in other words, the only things that are going to be changing. Right? The viscosity of the air remains the same and the gravity remains the same. Okay? So again, you're reminded of the calculation here. Let's continue. Right. So, from the data provided, our den the density of our particle is 10 to the third power. Right? So, we convert. So, what we want to do is um, remember the we want to convert from one micrometer to meters all right because we want everything in common um common units okay so we want to do a bit of a conversion so this is our remember this is our standard conversion here we were also provided with information regarding the diameter right so what was it diameter we were given again let's go back here right one micrometer diameter right so the one micrometer diameter this is 10 to the minus 6 power in meters our gravity is constant at 9.81 the now this is the part here to remember the density of the air is the same as the density of the particle therefore omit from equation so we are omitting the density of the air um, right and you're reminded here that the viscosity of the air at 20, 27 degrees Celsius this is the calculation for it alright so this is what we are actually including as our denominator Okay, so this this here is, we are going to use this as a constant. Okay, because if you recall the note I had at the top, for these calculations, the only things that will be changing will be the diameters and the density. Okay. Alright, so now we have all of our data organized. We can solve for V1. So we include our gravity, 9.81 multiplied by let's see what's that again that's um that's the density of our uh, our particle right 9.81 multiplied by our density and multiplied by our diameter right so this is our diameter squared remember this is what we have in the equation dp squared we divide that again by the viscosity of our air that's the that's our denominator here and we complete our calculation and the answer you should get is 2.95 by 10 to the minus 5 power right so you have to be careful though please make sure that as you work through these examples um, that you are using a scientific calculator and be careful with your um, with the use of your calculations with the exponents because that is where you can run into some trouble you, if you don't use the calculator correctly all right so at this point i want to thank you for just bearing with me to work through these calculations so what i would want you to do next please refer to the e-classroom for some other questions there are three questions each for each of the types of calculations three questions for the gas calculations three for the particulate uh, calculations but solutions have also been provided for you so use them both together to work through them 
make sure you understand what is going on because you are reminded that your your midterm exam and even your final exam can include a question from here thank you for your cooperation